Take a deep breath in. As you breathe in, breathe in a feeling of relaxation. And as you exhale, just allow feelings of tension, worry or stress to leave your body in your outward breath. As you breathe in and breathe out, allow feelings of tension to leave your body. Allow your breathing to slow down, giving yourself permission to let go, enabling you to just be at one with your breath. Notice the sensation of the air going in through your nostrils, down your windpipe, filling your lungs and noticing Does it make your chest rise? Is it your diaphragm that moves? Does it raise your shoulders? Scan your body for any feelings of tension, particularly around the eyes or the jaw, the neck and the shoulders. And accept that as you breathe in, you're breathing in a resourceful feeling of relaxation. And as you exhale... Any feelings of any worry, stress or tension is just leaving your body in that outward breath. Meaning just by breathing in and breathing out, you can feel like you're going deeper and deeper relaxed. As your body relaxes, I want you to hold an image in your mind of a colourful quilt. And I want you to imagine this is a quilt of patches, all different patches, all different colors. I want you to get a sense that this is an incomplete quilt and you have a desire to sew together the missing patches. It doesn't look right in its current form and therefore you have a desire to repair any damage to the stitching, to replace worn patches with new patches and to choose the right colours and shapes to complete this quilt. Allow your focus to be on this quilt. Almost like your body is moving itself as you just notice the things you'd like to improve in that quilt. And as you look into the colors of the quilt, I want it to remind you of a time in your childhood when you were playing in a park. And perhaps in that park was one of those seesaws that just goes up and down. And as you look at this seesaw, I want you to notice it is weighted in one direction. All that would need to happen is weight to go on the other side and it would flip. And I want you to accept the suggestion than in modern Western societies, the nutritional seesaw means that people have too much calories and not enough nutrition. And I want you to imagine walking over to the seesaw, putting weight on the other side until it flips the other way. As you start to think, what would your meals look like, your snacks look like. If nutrition was high and calories were low. And I want you to think about all those foods that are delicious, that are fresh, the vegetables, the salads, the fruits, 
because that's what that diet would look like. Most of modern society have 70 to 80% of their food that are processed and a tiny percentage that are fresh, natural ingredients. The vegetables, the fruits, the spinach, the carrots, the avocado is a tiny percentage of the normal diet. But as you think about that seesaw flipped the other way, you entertain the idea that if 70 to 80% of your diet is fresh, natural ingredients, and those ingredients are full of fiber and water, that it increases the probability that your diet is nutritionally rich and calorie poor. There's a powerful saying that when you know better, you do better. And I want you to imagine that you're in a classroom or studying in a library where you're learning about nutrition. But you're learning about nutrition through the lens of when you know better, you do better. That when ignorance is replaced with knowledge, it becomes intuitive and natural to make better choices and better decisions. And I want you to imagine that you're studying in a library of nutrition. And each time you learn something new, I want your mind to create a movie as to what your life would be like implementing this new knowledge so that learning is not disassociated from life but a catalyst to improve your life. I want you to accept the suggestion that your body will take what it needs and reject what it doesn't. That when you eat a diet full of vitamins and minerals your body will take whatever it needs and anything that it doesn't need or can't absorb will just pass through your body with no consequences. Perhaps you can imagine imagine your body like a quilt and the nutrition that you need is an empty square in that quilt that if your body finds what it needs it will take it and stitch it together as part of this beautiful quilt and if it doesn't need it it just gets ignored left to the side until you find the next perfect piece of material for your quilt I want you to imagine seeing yourself on a day when you're busy. Perhaps you can imagine deadlines to meet, work to do. And I want you to notice that when you're at your busiest, you forget to be hungry. Or perhaps you are hungry and just don't notice it. I want you to imagine that from this point forward being stimulated by important work being busy doing important things from this point forward is an appetite suppressant. Your body doesn't need excess calories and your body can't absorb excess nutrition. If you have too much nutritional food, your body will take what it needs and the rest just leaves your body in your urine. But if you consume excess calories, your body will bank that excess calories in the form of body fat. 
So doesn't it make sense? That if you're busy and don't feel like eating, then you don't need to eat. But when you do feel like eating, to choose those foods that are nutritionally dense and calorie poor. Those fibrous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, spinach, carrots. Imagine those fibrous fruits, apples, bananas, nectarines. That when you consume a diet of brightly colored fresh food, you're giving your body all the nutrition it needs. But because of all that fiber and water in those foods, a lot of it will just pass through your body since it can't be stored. I want you to imagine yourself a year from now A year of being busy to the point where you forget to be hungry. And when you are hungry, you're choosing nutrition over energy. As you accept that you already have the energy stored in your body fat cells. From this point forward, there will be new priorities you will prioritize nutrition over calories. Nature over taste. And meals over snacks. And imagine seeing yourself a year of eating this way. So busy some days you forget to eat. And when you do eat, you're choosing nutritional, delicious foods. And after a year, notice how much weight you've lost and what you've lost in weight you've gained in health, vitality and confidence. See that version of you and aspire to be that version. Knowing that you can get everything you want by increasing your knowledge, by working hard, and making great choices. And when you see that future version of you looking the way that you want to look, let me know by nodding your head. That's right. And now imagine that you've left that library, the library of nutrition, and found yourself back in a park seeing the seesaw this time tilted the right way to represent high nutrition and low calories and then realize that's a thought within a thought as you return to sewing a quilt but this time the quilt is complete beautiful that you took the patches that you needed and left everything you didn't to the side the quilt wouldn't look right if you had extra patches. You only took as much as you needed and were fine to leave everything else to the side. And hold that thought as you return to the present, feeling resourceful, feeling a desire to turn knowledge into thoughts, thoughts into choices, choices into a destiny where you become the version of you you deserve to be take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your nose wiggle your fingers wiggle your toes get a sense that you're returning to the present as i now count from one to ten to awaken you starting to count one two three waking up Four, five, six, more alert. Seven, eight, open your eyes, open your eyes. Nine, ten, wide awake, wide awake, wide awake. 